Welcome to the buy list. This is episode 41. This is not financial advice. This is cardboard. Nate, what's up? Something's, what's something's up? different. I I don't know what's different. I threw cards. You said the thing. This just seems like a normal recording to me. It's the first time we have a guest. Welcome oh, in, look. Yeah, welcome in Tyler owner operator of righteous gaming hello thanks for having me we, we we've talked for a while but i don't know if everyone knows who you are what you do so why don't you uh just kind of give us a little bit of a rundown of how you got started what you do in fab and all that fun stuff yeah so uh, i started playing back during crucible war uh, meta back when the only thing the only way we could play was um through webcam online um, all the stores were shut down uh, so those were very fun times. So I've been playing for almost three years now. And uh, like you said in the intro, I own Righteous Gaming, which is a TCG player store. Um, currently is my full-time job. So um, I am make a living buying and selling fab cards. And um, I'm hoping to open up my own store someday. So that's the goal. That's what I'm working towards. Until then, I'm just grinding it out. I'm playing fab and uh just having a good time so i'm um, happy to be here thanks for having me on and um i'm excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today yeah, yeah for sure um yeah so you know we're normally a market podcast tyler you are obviously as you just said owning um a very sizable tcg player store wheeling and dealing cards you you kind of have your finger on the pulse you've been You've been in the background a bit, you know, we've, like Nate said, we've, you know, we've been talking for a couple months now, right, back and forth, just, um, you know, on cards, on fab, things like that, what's moving, what's selling. So, yeah, it's uh, it's nice to have you here, glad to have you here, and um, we're going to be talking about, well, we were going to be doing <laughs> nothing but heavy hitters predictions, but uh, LSS dropped their banned and restricted list which wasn't supposed to be a surprise at all they told us don't worry it's just lexi it's just the lexi check and we're moving forward right but then they like were like oh by the way we're going to change the system and how it works and when it checks yeah uh and before we move on to that too like let's while while we are like a market focused podcast we are players we love fab yeah. and tyler's no exception Tyler is a hell of a Katsu player. Mm -hmm. uh, was it 17th, 18th at Baltimore calling? Yep, 18th. So, like, man wheels and deals some cardboard, but he's also not afraid to put people in the dirt. So, um, while we all love flesh and blood in the market side of it, we also love to just end people's careers. So, I'm um, happy to have both a player and uh, a market connoisseur to, uh, joining us today. Yeah, uh, that that in that medal you're not supposed to uh, be placing 18th with Katsu. <laughs> that was uh, old him and uh, all kinds of nastiness flying around. Yep. So uh, yeah, so LL, uh, we had a bit of an update to the system again. So LSS is not afraid to change the Living Legends format, <laughs> or no, not the format, but the. Uh, the system itself. So I think they've, I think it was last banned and restricted. They changed it. Um, they updated some points. I would consider the time before that, uh, maybe you guys disagree with me, but I would consider them slightly minor, right? There was just a couple points increases they added. I think that's when they added PTI events getting points. Um, but this time I got it up over here. They did some pretty heavy, heavy changes to the points. So World's Championship goes from 200 to 300. Um, Battle Hardens go from 10 to 40. That's a lot. Um, National Championships go from 10 to 20. Um, PTIs go from 4 to 20. <laughs> and um, ProQuest, Road to Nats, not changed, staying at 4. And then skirmish going from two to four. Uh, Pro tour calling U.S. national champ and um, national champs. Uh, what was that? Above ninety six players stays at forty. So lots of points uh, flowing into the system. Yeah, I 
Um, I think it's a little bit of an overreaction to like Lexi being like, it seems like this would have been a great for this ProQuest season, but I think a lot of people have voiced criticism and I think it's a little bit of an overreaction to have the check every Monday. Um, oh, yeah, that's the second half. I yeah, the the points are one thing, and then the you're right, Nate. The um, the other big change, the second half of the change is instead of checking at every band and restricted, they were now checking every Monday. I I wish it was like a check every Monday when there's like problematic heroes towards the top and like ready the LL. But if you look towards like the past of Flesh and Blood, when like Briar and Prism were like just on that cusp, and like you had literally no idea if they were gonna LL or not, like, and maybe some stores won't post their results. Like, it's it can be. I think that's a little bit too extreme because it's a really short notice that it's Monday, and then if you got like a really sweaty armory, like, and they're like, "Sorry, your hero LL last night," like. What what are you gonna do? Go scramble the brand, build a brand new deck in one day? You're just not gonna show up to your armory. Like, yeah, where are, where are these uh, armories you're going to though, Nate? <laughs> I oh, listen, like, I don't exist. I'm just gonna be. There might they, be some, they but... say that it doesn't take effect till the next Friday, but yeah. Um, so like it affects the the season, the weekend events, if like you're in a pro quest season. Yeah. Okay. Um, I retract the criticism is still there. Like if. I think our what well, it, it doesn't hurt the the season players like at all because mm -hmm. most of us have six seven decks enough cards to build pretty much whatever hero. Mm -hmm. But it hurts the casual players, the newer players, the players that have one maybe two decks, players that can't afford to have multiple decks at any given moment. Um, yep. And so you see less players who are able to um, just switch decks on the fly in the middle of a season, um, like if they did it after the season checks. Then at least you can use your deck for the whole season. But if like you have one deck, and I'm ready to play play Lexi for my my local store's pro quest, and it's mm -hmm. the only pro quest in town, that's the only event I'm gonna play. But she LLs the weekend before. Now I can't play Fab that weekend unless I borrow a deck or learn a deck from someone. I think that's the that's the complaint. I think um, that is being had by by a lot of players, especially the smaller time players. It, um, can push some people out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, as you mentioned, Nate, maybe a little bit of an overreaction, especially since I think I think they saw real damage done uh, this pro se pro quest season with Lexi kind of yeah. being like dead dead man walking, right? And I, I think um, you know people just didn't show up or you know the i mean the dallas uh battle uh dallas calling was oof, pretty low attendance for a calling right typically we can point to those in the u.s and be like look at that that's 600 people that's you know and and it only come under under 300 i think it was really kind of um maybe snapped <laughs> snapped them snapped lss awake on that situation and um yeah so they We'll see how it goes. My 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 opinion is I, I agree with you, Tyler, that you know, for someone that has one deck, right, they're sleeving it up, that's definitely going to suck. But also I, I live in I was kind of thinking about this. I don't think you get I don't think this like surprise factor is going to come in that often. Right? Like if if, if Lexi was um, yeah, if it was checking every week this season, you would know like two or three weeks out that Lexi was going to be gone. You're like, well, I got one weekend with her, so I got a plan for that. And again, I understand not everyone can just go and buy another deck or, you know, even switching to Riptide or Azalea is not easy from Lexi, right? That is a power. <laughs> First, it's a, it's a meta tier down for sure. And, um, it's the ranges, huh? <laughs> Riptide is like not a manager down. That thing is that thing's going from the penthouse straight into the freaking laundry chute to the basement, baby. Yeah, but like I mean that that would be the counter argument, right? It was like, well, just play another ranger. There's two others in the it's like, well, Azalea plays completely different and the majestics don't all just slide into her deck, right? You need to find a 
uh, cross cross wraps. You need to, you know what I mean? So there's, it's not just a, I mean, I think mo I think a good portion of it does, but, um, yeah, it's not super easy to do, but, um, I, I think, you know, and as I let off this conversation with, it does seem like LSS is very open to change and quick change, which is great, right? This isn't like, this could literally change the next BNR, um, at, at this, at this rate. I mean, they're changing it every time or, you know what I mean? I think they'll let this one ride a bit to see how it goes, but, um, you know, I'm just happy to see them like active and kind of just try new things really. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, like you said, I think players going into a season know that their deck is going to have a possibility of of getting retired. Um, and so I already have people who are saying I don't want to play Draw My because I don't want to only play with her for a couple months. Yeah. So they're not buying the Draw My cards. So I think we're we already see some of that foresight. But what's really interesting is going to be seeing skirmish season coming up um, late November, early yeah. December. Uh, every week we might get a new hero to LL. There's some heroes that are within 100, 150 points. Um, so I think it's going to affect skirmish season a lot. And I think that's going to kind of be their test run um, to see how that affects the format. But it was clear um, to me through the announcement that heroes just aren't um, reaching living legend fast enough. Had what five or six this year to hit living legend, but we had 10, 12 heroes come out this year. Uh, that they do that every year. We're gonna hit 30, 40 heroes in four or five years, and it's gonna be such a weird meta. Um, and so mm -hmm. clear that they want to retire heroes faster. Um, and so this is the way that they have to do it. Um, and I mean, it's exciting, it means the meta shifts a lot more. Every big event is different. Mm -hmm. Um, so Every season is different. We don't have stale metas like we've had in the past. And so I'm excited for it personally. Um, and I'm ready to, to, to see what the world's meta looks like now. Yeah, same. I, think, I, I totally agree. I think this is going to be the true test for the game. Like, this is, like, it is a hero-based game. So, like, people really identify with their heroes. You look at a lot of the top players and like they're almost like you name it, like you talk about like Mara and Dromai and like Bang was like so like connected to old him and then he just moved into Lexi. But like there's so many like top heroes like Josh Lau, who's like the warrior guy. So Tyler Broughton who's Katsu. Woo. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. that Tyler guy like a Katsu main. Um but like like what happens when Katsu LLs? Like, does your like do, do you find the spark for a new hero, or like does the game like slowly start to kind of like wane in enjoyment for you? So them LLing heroes at this rate is gonna be one the the rapid meta shift in the market is gonna have ripples throughout the market because we are in a very much a player's market. So like the in demand cards go very quickly. Look at Twin yeah. Drive. Look at Heist. <laughs> Like yeah. those cards are humming right now because Dash just lit the world on fire. Um, but like, if we see a shift in these metas so rapidly that like all of a sudden some random deck wins and it's like none of these cards were any money and all of a sudden they get bought out, like we're gonna see the a lot more people holding on to their cards because they might suddenly be more valuable later too. So I think the true test of the game will come this next year where. We will see as they introduce all of these new heroes and they LL old ones. What does that do for the longevity of the game? Do people start to lose interest as their heroes LL and they don't want to like pick up new heroes, or can they continue to make really fun and exciting heroes that people will like move to and shift to? Because they've been designing a lot of really cool heroes. The power level has been a little bit decreased on some of them, but mm. people have really connected with a lot of these new heroes. Um, who had older heroes that they loved and they kind of like, well, look at that one. That one's kind of a cutie. I want to play that one. Yeah. So I think it, the next year is going to define um, the longevity of LSS. Yeah. Heroes are like an extension of who we are, you know? Yeah. I'm a ninja in real life. Not really, but <laughs> like that is who I am on in the, in the game. Right. That's who yeah. I choose to identify with. So. Yeah, it really speaks to how well they've embraced that and designed around that, right? 
Like yeah. if you think about a ninja deck, you're doing like kicks, certain kicks in a row, and it really gives you that feel of like comboing out and you know really pulling off like ninja moves, right? Um, so yeah, it will be interesting to see with how fast they're moving. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that was kind of a surprise, <laughs> right? It was supposed to be a hey, it's just Lexi, um, Lexi L uh, L and uh, we move on to worlds, but um, pretty big shakeup. Interesting to see how these points accumulate. And, um, you know, we do have a lot of new uh, heroes coming into the into the game next year, right? There's um, 15 plus. Yeah, 15 plus. So we're going to have to make some room for sure. All right. My hot take, they don't need to make any room. <laughs> they don't. It's like, so I I think Flesh and Blood is closer to League of Legends than any other card game. Um, like, it is such a hero-centric game that you can have a very deep hero pool and it rewards the best players because they will understand all of the heroes and how they interact. But there's always going to be like a clear kind of like top tier in terms of like your top laners, your mid laners, your supports, your ADCs, your junglers, like, there's always kind of going to be a best in each category and a really deep hero pool can kind of let you explore that. Yeah. But you can't get to like 30 though, or like 30 or 40. You have to like trim it down a bit. I Why think because it's like impossible for them to, to like balance. It's hard, harder for new players to get into the game and understand all the matchups. Yes. Has that stopped anyone from playing league of legends? That game is complicated well, as hell. And also like the more, the more rotation that happens, the better they're able to sell new product because you can't hold on to your deck for three or four years and play a relevant hero for that long. You have to buy more cards. Uh, I don't sold. like Tyler being on the show. He brings logic <laughs> into these arguments and I'm not a fan of this logic. Nathan's a dreamer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. So speaking about new products, um, no. Kind of the main new product. Yeah, kind of our main topic of the of the pod tonight. Uh heavy hitters is coming out, guys. And we got some takes. Yo. Oh, yeah. So I we're gonna get spoilers sooner than we think. Yeah, like next yeah. week. Uh I this is dropping on Friday, so then at Worlds. I think we'll get I think it's already confirmed, right? That they're gonna show us some stuff at Worlds. Well definitely. You yeah. think we're gonna get a hero reveal? Hundred percent. I think it's 100%. too perfect. Of Ted is gonna break into the LSS studios at Barcelona and steal all the top secrets. Yeah, I want to talk. You just gotta I'm... break that blanket off of the the big emperor card before they do, right? She's so pissed. <laughs> oh my god! Imagine. <laughs> yeah, I did it. But, yeah. Um. Yeah, so next week I think we're gonna probably I think you're I think you're right, Tyler. We're gonna get a hero. Um I think we're all in agreement what hero that could possibly be. Uh and that would be this man right here. The guy on Mr. Jarl. Jarl. I think uh, it definitely would... someone that is in the lore already, so it drives hype up. Yeah. I remember last year at Worlds there was a QA question and one guy was like when are we going to get Jarl? And they mm -hmm. said, you might get him sometime. But like, he's coming. Like, he's he's in the, in yeah. the works. So. And about a year away. Cox. Uh, what's up? Cox. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. The guy from Smashing Performance? I don't know about that. I, I think. Um, you never even knows this guy. Oh, boy. Could be. But I think they'll. <laughs> Yeah, I think they'll be dropping Mang the guy from Mango for sure. Frederico, Federico will be there. Jarl, it'll be a good it'll be a good announcement for him. And if they're willing to hint it a year ago, that's probably right when they were developing heavy hitters, right? So it'd have been fresh yeah. in their mind. Um, that's some tinfoil hatting, but uh, I think it would be really cool for this guy to show up. What do you yeah. guys think he does? I mean, I think he has something to do with. Equipment hate. I mean, you look at all the cards that he's on, um, like yeah. Mangle, the Buckle. Um, like they all have to deal with like hate and equipment. 
So um, maybe there's some penalty for a hero that blocks with an equipment. Um, maybe he can destroy equipment easier. Yeah. Maybe they don't give us the text at all, and they just say, "Here's Jarl," and they don't spoil the text. You know that. <laughs> yeah, probably that's definitely gonna... possible. <laughs> Dude, that honestly, you just show Jarl, everyone's gonna get hyped. Oh yeah, that's all you have to show. Um, yeah, maybe I don't know. Like I know every idea that I'm gonna come up with right now in this pod is like probably overpowered, and I'm gonna get laughed at. But like maybe it's like temper yeah, armor. That was Nate. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nate goes. Nate goes pretty hard. But like maybe when you block with armor, it gives you two ta- two counters or something, or you know, may- there's something something to do with it. That'd be kind of thematic. Um, but I don't even think they necessarily have to do a theme like that, right? He's also on pulverize too, and that's just negative to attacks. So maybe he's gonna have some big dumb attacks. That's all I know. Yeah. Yep. He's on Col- the what is the new card from the professor kit? The Colossus. Um... I do not know those cards. That's the one hero out of the uh, set that I haven't played. It's like. If you if it attacks for thirteen or more and hits, I think you destroy a piece of equipment, which is oh, like very yeah. unbreakable. Yeah. I just like I, um, is it? Uh, no, I mean that's something Jarl would do. Yeah, I I think I think Tyler's like right, like some sort of like equipment hate. I don't know how you do that and have it. Maybe they do like the adult hero different than the young hero, kind of like the Arachne treatment. So that way, because like that feels like a very bad ability in in like limited, unless equipment's dope and limited. Which I'm for dope equipment and limited. Yeah, make make equipment great again, LSS. Colossal bearing that has thirteen or more attack and gains when it hits a hero destroyed equipment they control with one or less defense. Boom. That's right. So, out of pummel yeah. range, so you have to do something besides pummeling it. Yeah, big pumps. Big pumps. So, like, I we've already seen like the the spoiler cards that we've seen are the one that creates might tokens, which would also be like very on brand for like throwing like really big attacks, um, agility, and I forget what the other thing was. It sucked. It didn't matter. <laughs> I just looked at the brute cards to be completely honest. And yeah, do you think do you think any heroes are going to be reprinted? Like, do you think we're going to get like a a Rhinar or a Dorinthia? I mean, everyone's wanting a new mm-hmm. Dorinthia. Yeah, I think I don't know if we'll get uh, like a reprint or like an upgrade for Dorinthia. Maybe you know I've heard some Kasai talk, right? Like, oh, maybe there's an adult version of Kasai. I don't know if that. They would maybe have to do a different hero ability for her. I could see um, them adding in some of the older heroes like Dorinthia, uh, like they did on Outsiders to make the draft, um, you know, that kind of, uh, on different axes like they did with Outsiders, right? With Katsu and Azalea. So you think um, six or three? I would not be surprised if it was six, to be honest, yeah. That would be kind of cool. I think, I mean, with Outsiders the... was pretty was pretty solid. I don't think it was like the, I think uh, Bright Lights is a pretty good evolution of fab drafting. Um, but I think Outsiders definitely upped it from Uprising, for sure. I think Uprising was, we can look back on Uprising and all agree that it was a, uh, it wasn't my favorite draft set. I don't know what you guys... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Rising Graph treated me well, at least in terms of Elo. Yeah. Yeah. But, it was, no, I think, it was a fine. I think set. It, it was yeah. fine. Yes. It, it just it just cooked too long. I think that the Outsiders draft experience was a good one, and I think they want to replicate that. So I would not be surprised if we get six. Um, I. It, the other thing is, they said fifteen plus new heroes next year. So and we're getting four sets. Yeah. So we might get, like, I don't, 
know that they want to add more intimidate into the game so i find it hard to believe that they reprint reinar um so they we might get like two brute heroes a dory a young dory reprint Dory's and they have to print dawn blade in the set not necessarily they could give her the arachne treatment yeah but her, yeah. all of her lore is based around like dawn blade um and they could give her like dawn blade super resplendent <laughs> like, i don't know another dawn blade name yeah yeah so i uh, i think that this set's gonna align a lot with crew I think that we get some of the crew weapons in Limited for the first time. Sledge, Sabres, Mandible Claws, because um, those are iconic weapons mm -hmm. that haven't been in a Limited format. So um, if we get a Kasai reprint, get her in a, in a Limited format. Uh, I mean, they already put Benji in one. Uh, we, could, mm -hmm. we could get Heyo, um, in the set as well. I think it might mirror crew a lot in printing Gerald when he first um, showed up in crew. Uh, I think it could have a lot of uh, mirror with that crew set. I, I I agree with that. Like the fact that we also saw like our first tokens. We saw cash in there. We saw copper tokens and crew. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, there's no way they put KO in a limited set though. There's yeah. zero. Chance. Yeah, yeah. That's probably true. You can't uh, be competitive with him. Yet. Um, <laughs> you can't, you can't have him in, in a draft at the Pro Tour and just have him beat someone because he rolled a five or six. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can't have that. What do you, like? What do you think about like reprints though? For like, I, you were saying like the weapons, but what other reprints do you think we might see, both in set and like in the expansion slot? Because like I, I don't know if we're seeing all these big dumb attacks. I think we're gonna see CNC come back in the expansion slot. Might even be main set, honestly. Um, yeah. I think that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah, it oh, could I definitely think... fit in both. It can fit in the expansion slot or the main set. I think. Yeah, CNC needs a reprint. It's like the one majestic from the older sets that is still pretty expensive and accessible for newer players that don't have those cards yet. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think it, uh, I was going to say, I think, you know, uh, I think we mentioned this on maybe one of the pods a couple weeks back, especially once Bright Lights came out, right? I think... Um, you know, this set will kind of give us the confirmation of my my take of that white border might be um, dead. Uh, yeah. It seemed weird to me, you know, I, not to go backwards here, but, you know, tech, we saw Tekla Foundry Heart reprinted. We saw Max V reprinted. Um, I think, you know, we can look at the reprints in this set, right? If there's a CNC in there that was a white border card, now getting a black border treatment again, um, you know, that's a... I would say that's a heavy indicator that um, they've moved on from the history pack product. Um, but yeah, this would not surprise me. We get a command and conquer reprint. Um, so with that being said, like you, uh, you just mentioned a couple cards, right? Cash in things like that, that are kind of, they're kind of staples. You know, you look on TCG player, you know, non foil unlimited version crew is like very hard to find. Um, yep. Like seal boxes are hard to get a hold of. Yes, you can find them on TCG Player. You're paying a premium now, and that's only going to get worse, right? That that unlimited run was very small, so you're seeing like rares from the set, Mavarin skies, things like that, um, creep up in price. And um, obviously, you won't see that card in this set, but I think they'll start to maybe target that set for reprints. Yeah, I think we get we get reinforced the line in this set, the way to block all these big attacks without blocking from hand, you know. Um I think I think we get reckless swing back in this set. Um yeah. 
I, I, yeah, there's a lot of stuff from crew that they can pull out. Like I said, the sabers are like a dollar or two a, a card. Mm -hmm. Claws are starting to become a dollar. Uh, like some of these like rares from crew are like pretty rare. Um, mm -hmm. And they're getting up there in price. And with the set mirroring it, Crucible of War, like heavy hitters, like you saw the intro trailer. Mm -hmm. Looked like a Crucible of War. I think that that's going to happen. So. Yeah, and to tie it back, <laughs> reckless swing reprint. <laughs> oh yeah, there's like one million reckless swings. Yeah, maybe not WTR cards, right? Because there is like a bajillion. Uh, Isn't that a Reiner spec? Huh? Isn't that a Reiner spec? Spec? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not. No, it's not no, 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 it's not because no. Levia can play it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I think what does is white border actually gonna be the rarest product they ever printed? <laughs> that would be funny. Hey, for real, it's supposed wanna, to be. I just want to open white border for singles, but like it's just like expensive, you know. I I will say at the ProQuest, um, oh, I didn't even bring it down with me. I won a ProQuest this weekend. Um, I forgot Dude, to bring my gold flow down. But I didn't even see I've that. never I've never seen so many white bordered CNCs, which is like not a knock on the players. Ted would call them peasants, but I would not. Um, they, I, like it's just like newer players getting into the game. And they just buy white border because they don't care. Um, and it mm. was I swear like every every person I played had white bordered CNCs, and I was like I didn't know there was that many white bordered CNCs. But like I mean, half my thoughts to deck is white border. Yeah, dude, I I love sneaking white borders in. Yeah, some cards look really good with it for sure. Yeah. Um, Not gonna lie, love the white border. It's a tilt factor. Yeah, tilt Ted calls me a pest. Psychic time. psychic damage, you know. Um, and someone actually get me for running white border. I was like, this one's there for. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's too much, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, heavy hitters, it's, um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be an interesting set. I think, you know, um, Bright Lights kind of was a surprise. I think heavy hitters is going to be, you know, hey, we did this thing with tanks and mechs and stuff. Let's get it back to, let's get it back to the, what you, what you knew and what you know and what you love. Let's do some Crucible of War. Let's do some WTR stuff, right? And uh, I Ted, think what do you think about the wager system? Oh yeah, so we we did Randy. get a wager uh, wager keyword. We don't know what it does just yet. We just know that it's on one of the spoiler cards. Um, yeah, that could be really interesting. We saw that in the key art um, of heavy hitters, like you said, like a Crucible of War or like a Gladiator Pit. Um, so there can definitely there could definitely be some mechanics around, you know, gold, silver, bronze, tokens, things like that. And gambling in a flesh and blood set, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. going to turn into a gambler. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're gonna, it sounds like we're going to be doing some gambling for sure. Um, I think you were talking um, about maybe interacting with the armor and how that works. Um, you know, you can buy kind of in a sense buying new armor or like equipping armor with you know paying paying money for it right as a gladiator would possibly yeah i think i think maybe you can just you got to start the game somehow with with currency with money um maybe a basic equipment like a helios miter type of equipment that start you start the game with x copper one copper two copper Maybe one copper per equipment slot that you have. Um, and over the course of the game, you upgrade those tokens into silver or gold. And once you can up upgrade them by wagering, um, you can start to use some of those payoffs. Like we saw with the spoiler card, you can, instead of paying the cost, you can destroy a gold. Um, gold can filter your hand. It can give you an extra resource. There's a lot of things that they can do with that. Um, but like starting the game with some sort of... Um, with some tokens, I think is something that's going to be present in the set. 
um, and it's something that you're going to be able to play around with in the game to try to gain more of those tokens. Um, the one card also said if it hits, create double the tokens that you would receive. So um, that's like extra money that you get from hitting a hero. I think there's going to be a lot of cool things that they're going to do with the token system um, and currency that is going to create a whole nother dynamic to this set beyond just the the playing the cards, attacking a hero, but you're also at that added layer of, do I want my opponent to get more money? Do I want them to get closer to their payoffs? Uh, mm-hmm. It encourages maybe blocking more, you know? So I think it's going to be really cool. I'm super excited for it. I think same. I'm, I'm very excited to see what they do with it. I think that it would take a lot of tokens, but like, like you said, almost like a Helios miter, but like in your inventory where like once you hit four copper, you can like then equip like this headpiece and this headpiece maybe like block one, blocks one or gives you an intellect. Um, but even from like the spoiler cards, I think that the the way they want the game to go is they're they're trying to force you into like not just blind aggro where it's like you want to like set up your power turn. So like the one card creates might tokens based on how many how much damage you do, and then the what is it du- a double runner where you get go again if you already had an agility token, and then uh, creates another agility token. So like you're continuing to set up these like kind of like wild turns that um, can go above and beyond fatigue, but also aren't like just like straight brainless aggro like Phi was, where it's just like you play every hand that you get and you never hold anything back. Where this is going to be a little bit more set up in to create those really big power turns. Yeah, it makes a so, lot of sense. Could be, it sounds I like... like what we saw with bright lights. Setting yeah. up some of those big turns with items. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm excited for it. Um, I know, Tyler, you are coming to Worlds as well. I'm flying out here next week. Um so I'm excited for that. Uh, Nate, unfortunately, I don't think you said you can't make it. We'll sure miss can. you, bud. We'll miss you. I'll uh, be in LA, though. Yeah. Oh, yes. LA. Officially qualified. Yes. Yeah. Officially qualified. Yeah, congrats. Um, not washed yet. Not washed yet. Exactly. But, yeah, no, I, I'm excited to see what James has to say about it. I'm sure, you know, I'll be... Uh, Try to get in a meet and greet with him as well. Chat him up a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really pumped to see what is uh, coming coming for uh, bright lights at Worlds for sure. Yes. Yeah, it'll be a good time. I'm excited to see the Living Legend format. Oh, see yeah. what meta is just a bunch of Starvos, or if it actually has a meta, you know. So uh, that'll be fun. The first Prism statue oh, in yes. Marvel Prism. Out in the world, you guys got predictions on price on that thing? Twenty grand plus or minus? Dude, I don't know that we'll ever know how much that thing sells for. <laughs> That's a uh... at least right. They said they're gonna make fifty of them, so yeah. A uh, hand like a handmade prototype by Weta Workshops. Their workshop is like kind of wild. Um, if yeah. if the viewers don't know, that is Weta is like known as the the pinnacle prop maker and um movie uh, they're they're known for uh lord of the rings all the props in there all the armor all the swords um they are insane so when they announced that that was a weta statue i was like whoa that's crazy so very cool it's gonna make that battle hard and very sweaty uh very sweaty <laughs> I had no idea what you just said, but all I wanted to say to it was darred. <laughs> I didn't know what a workshop was until you just explained it. Oh man, no, they're they're epic. I would I would say for anyone watching, you know, take a look on online to, on YouTube. They do some crazy stuff. Um, to they make... had their announcement trailer that is on their YouTube that you could look at. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, check that out. But all right. Uh yeah. So I think that's gonna I think that we can wrap it up here. That's gonna do it. Um Tyler, again, thank you for joining us on this episode. It was a lot of fun. Appreciate we, it. 
we should uh we should have you back we should have maybe we should do more guests nate um but uh yeah yes yeah for sure um okay we're gonna call it there peace everybody please like subscribe do the thing talk to you later peace